A while back, I was scrolling through Twitter, as I tend to do for hours on end, and I stumbled on a tweet from an artist that I like, talking about a manhua called The Horizon. They described it as a piece of media that makes you want to create again. This caught my attention. As someone who doesn't always have the motivation to do much of anything, I could always use something like that. But I had no idea the type of story I was about to plunge myself into. The opening scene introduces a small boy standing on a beach staring at the sea's horizon line. Immediately we're shown a large group of civilians panicking and attempting to run while the boy's mother hides him away in an alley just before gunfire consumes the area. The boy survives, however his mother isn't as lucky. With his entire world shattering around him, the only thing he can think to do is to keep walking. One day the boy finds a bus to take shelter in for the night. When he wakes in the next morning, the boy meets the girl, and their journey begins together. The Horizon is a grim story about the horrors of war from the viewpoint of children as they continue walking forward towards the future. The two main characters are simply referred to as the boy and the girl, along with none of the other characters ever being named. With the story only being 21 chapters long, there aren't a whole lot of characters, but each character leaves a heavy, lasting impression with each encounter. The first character, other than the two children, is the strange man. While walking down the lonely road, they are spotted by a strange man who has seemingly regressed into an almost primal state, unable to make coherent sentences, and only produces strange noises. The boy, being much more cautious and untrusting of others, is instantly nervous and wants to get away from him as quickly as possible, and is very quickly vindicated. The girl, however, being much more sympathetic, feels sorry for the man and doesn't want to leave him behind, which would end up being a horrible mistake. After escaping the strange man, the children are then kidnapped by an unknown group and taken through a city, where the man in a suit saves them. He allows them to stay and heal until they are ready to leave, only ever asking for their help in return. The man in a suit is the complete opposite of the strange man, having a much more sophisticated and precise madness to him. He has a dark and cynical view on humanity, deciding the best way to bring about peace is to kill everyone who holds a weapon, otherwise they would use the weapon for selfish reasons, failing to realize he is doing the exact thing he is trying to stop. After leaving the man in a suit's care, the children continue their journey towards the end of the road. Eventually the boy gets sick, and the girl has to take care of him. Here we're introduced to her backstory and the people she was with prior to meeting the boy. Each character from the girl's past has a warm and optimistic hope that slowly turns into a dark, uncertain fear as they leave one by one. After the boy recovers from his sickness, they once again continue their journey where they reach the road's end finally, and decide to keep moving forward through the forest. They find themselves in a standoff against two foreign children who mirror them exactly. Through their brief encounter, we understand that this war hasn't just affected a single country, and their journey forward isn't theirs alone. The story then jumps forward many years, with the boy being a man now. He finds a couple near the beach and slowly gets to know them. Still being extremely cautious of people, he is hesitant until an incident happens, where he finally overcomes his fears and doubts, and gets to see a glimpse of hope for the future, with a beautiful climax and some of the best art from the story. Being only 21 chapters in total, The Horizon is a near-perfect example of show don't tell with a majority of it being visual based with little dialogue or narration. It almost reminds me of works by Tsutomu Nihei, the mangaka behind series like Blame or Knights of Sidonia, with the focus being much more about how the art makes you feel and the words taking a backseat. The art style is much more rough looking compared to other manhua or manga, with it switching between chaotic and a much cleaner style depending on the characters and their current state of mind. The art instills an increasing amount of dread as the story progresses. It leaves you with a feeling like something can go wrong at any moment without a single hesitation. This story depicts one of the darkest parts of reality that we don't always think about. It really makes you grateful for everything you have and everything you're able to do. War is an awful experience, especially from the viewpoint of a child, but unfortunately it happens. This story isn't just about how horrible war can be. 
It's also about taking the hand you're dealt and pushing through it, constantly moving forward towards something, towards anything. I won't say that this is a perfect story, because it just isn't to me. Perfection is extremely hard to come by, and I think every story has some elements that can be improved, and there's just a few things I want to touch upon in that regard. The art style isn't necessarily for everyone, but it fits extremely well and conveys so much emotion with every line. If the art turns you off, then it might not be for you. With the story being so short, the pacing doesn't always feel the best. Sometimes it's a bit fast, when all of the days are blending together and suddenly the current conflict is over, and then they just move on to the next one. And the last thing I'll mention is the narration can be a bit repetitive at times, and it makes it feel like nothing is really happening in the story, which could be a turnoff to some. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does make you feel like some scenes are just not needed. Now is this one of my favorite stories? No, not even close. But is it worth a recommendation? Yes, without a doubt. I honestly don't think I would be the same person today had I not stumbled upon this story. It gave me the motivation I didn't have when I really needed it the most. I think my biggest takeaway from the story is the world will never be as perfect as we'd like it to be. Sometimes bad things just happen to good people who don't deserve it. But if we keep moving forward, one step at a time, no matter how long it takes, eventually, we'll find the light at the end of the world. Thanks for watching.